Hi folks, Dan Maslick here. Today we're going to talk to you about idle tuning on third generation General Motors vehicles with electronic throttle control. Uh, this particular car is a 2001 Corvette uh, automatic. The engine's been rebuilt. This is now a 383 with a mild cam. So the computer, the stock calibration is not going to be up to speed as far as controlling the idle on this uh, particular motor. So what we have to do is go after a few things now. It's usually the same case. Doesn't matter what GM vehicle you're tuning with electronic throttle. There are usually a few very specific tables you got to go after. One, of course, is your target idle speed, the desired idle speed that you're after. That table, basically what you're doing is telling the computer what the idle speed is that you're aiming for, that the engine is capable of. You want that idle speed to be as low as possible without sacrificing stability, and that's, that's key. You've got to maintain stability. This allows you to obviously not stall the engine. Uh, you obviously don't want it stalling during a left turn. The other thing is you want to have it as low as possible so that a guy like this, in this case with the automatic transmission, he doesn't have to fight that car when he's pushing on the brake coming to a stop. So lowest idle speeds possible while maintaining stability. So again, that's the target idle speed table, the base idle speed. The other thing we got to do is adjust base idle airflow, which for you carb guys is similar to adjusting a set screw on a carburetor. Set screw on a carburetor, obviously if you've got a cammed engine, you want to allow more air in, crank down that set screw, it opens the butterflies up, gives the engine more air, lets it idle. Same function in here works for base airflow table. Um, that's basically what it does, just adds extra air. The issue that you come into then is that when you end up adding more air into the engine, you may end up having a situation where the idle speed hangs. And that's because the stock table uh, is obviously meant to the ignition tables, the way they're set up is to work with an engine that has high vacuum when you've got a big cam that's not the case. So what we have to do is actually reduce the amount of timing that we've got. That helps us get back down to idle speed but has enough airflow that between the airflow that we introduce into the engine, the additional airflow, as well as that ignition timing at base idle, we'll have enough torque to keep it from stalling. So let's take a look. I'll show you how it's done. And uh, first thing we're going to do is start the car up and see how far off the performance is with no changes made whatsoever. So let's take a peek. Now what we're going to try to do at this point is to start up the car and see with no changes made to the idle settings whatsoever how the car reacts and then try to determine what we're going to have to do to get this set right. So let's give it a try. We'll start cranking it over and see where we go. Okay, so we see that by cranking the car over it, the car will fire, it'll rev up a little bit, but of course stall out. So what we're going to do, the very first change we're going to make is to the desired idle speed table. We'll see if that helps correct it a little bit. Okay, well now that we've tried starting the car up and see that the stock calibration isn't going to do us any good, uh, we expected that of course with a cam. Um, what we're going to do now is adjust the target idle speed, basically what our base idle speed is going to be. We're going to do this so that the computer understands what we're aiming for. We still don't expect it to run it properly, just changing that alone because of course we're not introducing any extra airflow. So what we'll do, we'll show you first what happens when you change just that and that alone. So we'll start it up, you'll see what ends up happening, and then we'll show you how to set the base airflow from there. So take a look, this will be interesting. <laughs> 